For the second time in my life, I was about to say farewell to the place I called home. But unlike when I'd been a child and my abuelos had dragged me kicking and screaming from my bedroom, I was standing on my own two feet, looking forward to the journey ahead. There was still so much we hadn't planned for. What would happen if the van broke down out in the middle of nowhere? What if there was a problem with the apartment that hadn't been disclosed? Were our soon-to-be new neighbors complete assholes? We were hoping we could land jobs quickly once we got settled in, but that could fall through as well, which would be a big problem since we still needed to replace V's ride. It would have to be something that was cheap, but wouldn't break down as soon as we got it off the lot. Discovering a new city, meeting new chooms, building a whole new life. It was intimidating to face so many challenges all at once, but it was exciting too. Unfortunately, that excitement had kept us up for most of the night, tossing and turning. By the time the sun had peaked over the horizon, we'd given up on sleep and had brewed our last cups of coffee. It was still too early to get a move on since we had some things planned out and not everyone would want to wake up at the crack of dawn, but we did start the arduous task of hauling everything down to the van. Two boxes at a time was the best way to go. If they were small or light, I could manage three of them, but trying to balance it all as I navigated the narrow fire escape was a challenge that I'd learned the hard way. I was in a hurry, trying to cut back the amount of punishment my joints were being subjected to when my ankle gave out on the last step. I didn't fall or sprain it, thank fuck, but my grip slipped and the boxes spilled onto the pavement, sending our crap everywhere. Fuck! I huffed in frustration and knelt down to begin stuffing everything back inside. Fortunately, nothing seemed to be broken. As I threw everything back inside of the boxes, I caught sight of a picture frame that was turned face down on the ground. I picked it up and turned it over to examine it. There was no way I could ever have been that young. I wish I remembered who had taken the photo of me. It must have been my abuelo. Something about the picture reminded me of him. But why couldn't I remember? Why were there so many things I wanted to forget, while this, something I knew was good and could feel a positive association to, I couldn't recall? It wasn't fair. Once everything had been jammed into the back of the van, I wiped some of the grime off on my pants. The black fabric didn't hide the smudges, but it was still better than soiling the white crop top I wore. V was folding up the bedding when I stepped through the door and surveyed the apartment. Other than the junk we'd left in the storage room and a smattering of crinkled tape and trash scattered across the floor, it was bare. Everything all right? V asked. You were gone for a bit. Yeah, I tripped on the last step and had to nurse a bruised ego. Think I got it all packed up nice and tight so it won't spill out during the drive. V nodded and glanced at my hands. What you got there? This? I looked down at the picture in my hands. Tis me. Remember? How could I forget? V smiled. You were a little chonk, weren't you? Apparently. I don't know why the picture of the smiling girl made me feel sad. Perhaps it was the innocence in her eyes. The unknowingness of the life that awaited her. Or... Maybe it was simply the same sense of melancholy everyone felt when they looked back upon simpler and happier times. No matter the reason, the woman I was now had sprung from those chubby cheeks and gleeful smile. Yet I didn't feel any connection to her. She was a stranger. I searched around, my eyes stopping at the kitchen counter. Being careful not to tip it over, I carefully set the frame against the wall. What are you doing? saying goodbye to her. V was flabbergasted. If you leave that here, it's gonna get pitched as soon as someone else moves in. Why would you want to leave that behind? It was already left behind when I was a kid, I shrugged. Don't see much point in dredging up the past. Damn, V exclaimed. Well, it's your call, but I hate leaving it behind since it's only gonna get chucked in the trash. I don't got any pics from when I was a kid. I noticed a hint of bitterness in V's tone and realized there was still so much about her past I didn't know. 
She had told me about her time starting out as a merc and the horrors that came with it. Those were details I would never forget. I knew less about her childhood. She'd grown up with her mother in Haywood, along with the rest of the homeless. But other than that, she was still very much a mystery. That would need to change. Granted, I had learned the hard way that we weren't the children we started out as, but I still owed it to her, and to us, to understand the child she had once been. In doing so, I might learn more about the woman she was now, and if there were more ugly details for us to wade through, we would do it. Together. I glanced at my hollow. Getting to be about that time. You sure she's gonna be home? V asked. You talked to her recently? Yeah, she told me yesterday she'd be around. Just gotta message her when we get there and she'll come down to meet us. V nodded and took a final look around the apartment. I'm gonna run the last of this down to the van. V paused for a moment before adding, You wanna take a minute or two to, I don't know, say goodbye? Even though I'd never considered myself a sentimental person, shit, I was about to leave behind a childhood photo of myself. The thought of getting some sense of closure stuck with me. I nodded and started toward the window. V gave my arm a gentle squeeze and hoisted the box into her arms. A few moments later, the apartment had turned quiet except for the faint roar of traffic outside. There it was. Night City. Thousands of times I'd stood exactly where I was now and looked out at it. Hopes, dreams, fears, horrors. And now, with a little bit of luck on our side, this would be the last time I'd ever lay my eyes upon it. I didn't feel any exuberance or joy, but I wasn't angry either. In a strange way, it felt like the city and I were perfect reflections of one another. The sprawling metropolis wasn't just a beautiful visage filled with nightmares lurking beneath the surface like I'd often thought. V was all the proof I needed that there was still good to be found. One just had to know where to look. So long, Night City. With the first of several planned farewells out of the way, I turned and left the apartment for the last time, wishing the next tenants the best of luck on my way out the door. V was gracious enough to let me drive first. Seeing as how we were both tired and had a long day ahead, I would take the first shift, and then she would take over in the afternoon. It seemed like a fair way to divide things, though with only one cup of coffee keeping me upright, I would have preferred to curl up on the seat and go back to sleep. As I pulled out of the lot and turned onto Charter Street, I never looked back. Fortunately, the morning traffic was light, and it didn't take long for us to reach our destination. Mega Building H-10 was an enormous structure reaching high into the sky, no different from any of the others scattered across the city. Thousands of apartments were cramped inside, each one an exact copy of the next. But even though they were nothing to get excited about, I couldn't suppress a smile as Katie bounded down the concrete steps to greet us, her face beaming with pride. Judy! Katie leapt into my arms, her thin frame nearly sending me tumbling to the ground. Hey, Katie. Good to see you. How have things been? Mm, doing all right. Could be better. Finally got myself all moved into my first place, and now I'm out of a job again. Did you hear what happened at Clowns? How could I not? This was now the third time that, directly or otherwise, I'd been partly responsible for putting Katie out of a job. It was something I wanted to atone for. I nodded. Gotta say, I'm glad the place is closed, Katie said. I mean, the other dolls were really nice to me, but I didn't like it there. It made me do things I didn't want to. Say, do you happen to- Oh, shit, where's my fucking manners? How are you doing? Don't worry about it, I said with a warm smile. I'm good. What were you gonna ask? Katie looked at me sheepishly. Well, I was wondering if you know anyone who might be hiring? A studio or something? I'm paid up through next month, but I'm gonna need something soon or I won't be able to afford staying here. Afraid not. It's not really my field anymore. Oh. K 
Katie's voice trailed off as her eyes filled with sadness. I suddenly realized the unintended implication of what I'd just said. Oh, I don't mean giving up BD or anything like that. Fuck no. I just don't have the same connections I used to in the industry. Gonna take me some time to try to get back on my feet. A long silence stretched between us as she tried to process the fact that I couldn't help her anymore. Not the way she was expecting me to, anyway. But, I added, that's why I wanted to stop and give you this. I led Katie to the back of the van, ignoring the smirk V threw my way from the passenger seat and grabbed a hold of a heavy stack of boxes. The gear inside of them rattled about precariously as I carefully bent my knees and set the cartons on the ground. What's all this shit? Sorry, I meant stuff. This is most of my old BD editing equipment from Lizzie's. I kept my wreath and some things I wanted for myself. Not about to part with some of my best gear, but the rest of this would end up gathering dust in our new place. I figured you might be able to get more use out of it than me. The idea of giving Katie my old equipment had come to me after I'd planned out my apology tour. V hadn't offered any real kickback, though she hadn't been thrilled to hear I was planning to give away what was easily several thousand eddies worth of equipment to a young girl whose future was uncertain. But I'd argued that was exactly why she needed it. I couldn't try to fix Katie's life anymore, not when I knew there was a lot of work to be done on my own. But even if I couldn't save her, I could at least help by giving her a fighting chance for a better future. It was what I'd always set out to do, not just for Katie, but for everyone I'd helped along the way. What she chose to do with it would be up to her. Katie was still in shock at the realization she'd just inherited a professional editing suite, which she couldn't have known, easily rivaled most professional setups. Judy, I. I, I, I can't take all this. Sure you can, I said nonchalantly. Just promise me one thing, okay? What? That you'll put it to good use and stop doing what you're doing for a living. Ain't nothing wrong with that profession, but you got all the tools here to set yourself up as a preem editor. Don't pawn this shit off and find yourself right back where you started a year from now. I made sure to raise my voice as I spoke so V overheard me. If we walked past a BD shack a year from now and saw all my old gear up for sale in the used section, well, I'd earn myself quite an earful. I wanted to believe that wouldn't happen. But how, how, how would I even start? Katie's eyes were frantically darting from one box to the next. I don't know the first thing about this stuff other than what you taught me that one time. <laughs> and who do you think taught me? I tapped myself on the chest. The only person who will hold you back is yourself. Talent's like a muscle. You gotta flex it if you want to get strong at something. I'm giving you some weights. So if you want a path to something better for yourself, all you gotta do is start lifting. Are, are you sure? I nodded. Take it. I... Thanks, Judy. I'll make sure it doesn't go to waste, I swear. That was the best I could hope for. I knew there wasn't a single dishonest bone in her body, so hopefully things would work out for her. Bien. I glanced up at the colossal building behind her. So, you said you're all moved in? Katie's eyes perked up. I am. I'm still not used to having so much space to myself. I got a nice neighbor, too. Her name's Carla, and we grab coffee in the morning. It's nice having someone to talk to. Interesting. My alarm bells had immediately started going off considering how naive Katie still seemed, but I quickly silenced them and reminded myself that she was out of my hands now. Besides, I didn't want any of my cynicism to rub off on her. Night City might do that all on its own without having me to pour cold water on her hopes. Sounds nice. You want to come up and see? I glanced over my shoulder. V was still waiting patiently for me in the van. She wouldn't mind if I went up to take a look, but I didn't see a point in doing so. This was about cutting ties with the past, not strengthening them. I would love to, but V and I gotta get a move on. I just wanted to drop this stuff off and wish you good luck. 
Okay. Thanks, Judy. We'd reached the moment where the impending farewell weighed upon us both. Rather than awkwardly standing around with my hands stuffed in my pockets, I reached out and pulled Katie into a hug. This is the best start I can give you, I said, holding her tight. If you got any questions, you know how to reach me. I do, <laughs> and I'm sure I'll end up having to ask you how to turn all this shit on. Stuff, sorry. I started to laugh and stopped. If I didn't get this off my chest now, I knew I'd regret it. That was something I couldn't take with me as we tried to set our sights forward. There was a reason I'd started this tour with Katie. It was impossible to forgive others if I couldn't even forgive myself, and I couldn't do that without seeking her own forgiveness. Katie, yeah? I'm really sorry that things didn't go the way I planned. I never wanted you to get hurt, and never wanted all those bad things to happen to you. Katie didn't say anything right away. I kept waiting for her to start trembling or crying in my arms, but she remained still. Finally, she broke her silence. I, I'm not angry at you, Judy, and I don't blame you for anything. I'm really glad I met you and appreciate everything you've done for me. I'll try to keep in touch, if that's okay, besides asking you about all kinds of technical shit. I nodded and wiped my eyes before letting go of her. You take care of yourself, all right? I will. You too, Judy. See ya. See ya. I was relieved to walk away knowing I'd done all I could to put the keys to a better life in her hands. Yet there was still that nagging temptation to grab the wheel and to steer her toward what I thought was a better life. But I kept my eyes fixed ahead of me as I climbed back into the van and set off for our next stop. Whether or not Katie Elkrum would ever become a star was up to her. It didn't take long to reach our destination. It was odd pulling into the vacant lot of Lizzie's instead of the parking garage like I was accustomed to. But what was stranger was seeing Mateo and Rita waiting outside to greet us just as we'd planned. Hey there, Mateo called out when we stepped out of the van. Rita smiled but stayed silent. I noticed her eyes were fixed on me as we approached. I turned my attention to Mateo who was holding something in his hands. Hey, what's this? I figured for your last day in NC that I'd hit you up with one final order of Lizzie's finest nachos, fully loaded and hot, well, warm, off the grill. Mateo handed me a foam container which, sure enough, was warm to the touch as the thick layer of cheese oozing between the chips congealed at the bottom. It was a sweet gesture, even if it inadvertently made me crave a drink from the bar. I had really discovered these at the wrong time in my life, hadn't I? Thanks, I appreciate it. Let me toss these in the van. I hoped V wouldn't mind if I left her to make small talk with Rita and Mateo for a bit. She had always been friendly with them in the past, but this was supposed to be my stop, and I didn't want her feeling uncomfortable. Come to think of it, every stop we'd planned was mine, except for our next. I guess I simply needed more closure in my life than she did. After tossing the container on the dashboard, I turned and quickly made my way back. I hadn't been gone long, and I overheard V and Mateo having an animated discussion as I approached. So I assume you're gonna hit the expressway before you get off San Amaro? Nah, we're gonna take Cresmont, V replied. We've still got a pair of stops we need to make after this before we get the hell out of Dodge. Rita stood close by arms crossed, listening in but not engaging in the conversation. She was still staring at me, but quickly averted her gaze when V took my hand into her own. All good? Mateo asked. Yep. I glanced around the vacant lot. So, how have things been around here since I left? Susie still being her usual bitchy self? Couldn't tell you, Rita finally chimed in, taking a step closer. You didn't hear the news, did you? Hear what? Come the end of the month, we're all out of a job. Lizzie's is permanently shutting down on the 30th, all thanks to that fucking poser. My eyes widened. When Rita had told me about Susie's financial troubles and how she'd leaned hard against the bar, I hadn't realized how dire the situation really was. 
if Lizzie's bar was about to have its sign taken down. Holy shit. Her loans? Yep, Rita nodded. The big fat bill finally came due, and she's completely tapped out. Seems like she pinned all her hopes on that shit stain editor she hired to replace you. Obviously, that didn't turn out so well for her. I shivered at the memory of that creep sitting in my chair, using my equipment to jerk off to my BD. V must have noticed that I'd tensed up and tightened her grip. Got no regrets, V declared. Guy's lucky I didn't smash his fucking skull into the ground. Can say that again, Rita agreed enthusiastically. Dude never came back after that beating you laid down. And gotta say, it was impressive to watch. But, yeah, there's no one to cover the lease, so the doors are closing for good next week. No one knows where Susie went, though if she had any sponge left in that chrome skull of hers, she'd be halfway to the Atlantic by now. Don't know what the mocks are gonna do, but at least we don't gotta worry about the claws sinking their claws into us. That old joke, I chuckled. But what's the deal with the claws? They've had their eyes on this place for years. They have, but they've pulled back since some shit went down at Clowns. Don't got the deets, but it had something to do with the badges, so they must have done something to piss them off. Anyway, they're not keeping an eye on things like they used to. That was a welcome relief. It wouldn't have changed my plans to leave if the claws took the bar over, but it was good to know that I'd managed to keep that from happening, that I'd helped, even in a roundabout way. Rita was still in the dark on everything that had happened since I last saw her, and I couldn't think of a reason to tell her now. Even though I was still a mox, their reach didn't extend outside of Night City. It was time to say goodbye to that part of my life, even if the gang tats that dotted my skin would always be there. No shit, yeah, it'll give us a little breathing room while we try to figure out who's gonna take over, and what we're gonna do. Sounds like it's quite the pickle. I said simply. Things went quiet as we exchanged awkward glances. Rita's eyes flickered down between the three of us before settling on Mateo. Mateo, can you, um, check the bar or something and make sure we're good for tonight? Mateo gave her a knowing smirk. Well, that's as clear of a message as I've ever heard. I'll give you three your privacy and make sure the bar's all stocked up for the non-existent crowd coming in later. I didn't expect the hug that Mateo pulled me into, but I didn't push away from it. When he let go of me, there was a warm smile on his face. Take care of yourself, Judy. You too. Thanks for the nachos. As soon as he disappeared inside, Rita's composure fell apart and her eyes filled with regret. I... I just... I just wanted to say I... I messed up big time. I'm so sorry for making things awkward, and I, I wanted to apologize to both of you for that. While I had expected something like this from Rita, I had hoped she would have waited until it was just the two of us. V was standing right next to me and didn't know what to do with herself. It's okay, Rita. No need to apologize. V raised her arm, probably so she could rest a comforting hand on Rita's shoulder, but Rita recoiled, and I couldn't help but pity her as her real skin cheeks turned a bright shade of pink. I suddenly understood why I'd never seen this side of her before. Rita had spent years, probably decades, masking the storm raging inside of her just as I had, but she had never had someone to trust or confide in. She was utterly alone and didn't know how to process her emotions when they bubbled up to the surface like this. Having it all pour out into the open in front of V was only making things worse. I had to do something. V, can you give Mateo a hand and make sure everything's ready for tonight? I added a wink for good measure. Figure it's the least we can do, considering the free nachos he threw our way. I'm on it, V said with a subtle nod. I'll make sure he's not dropping shit left and right. Be back in a few. I waited until the door closed behind V before opening my mouth. So, Rita, no, please don't say anything, Rita quickly interjected. I never should have tried to, to do what I did. 
I feel like a complete gonk for putting the moves on you like that. For pushing all that shit on you. Fuck. V probably hates me, doesn't she? I shook my head. She doesn't hate you, but I'm glad you brought this up because it's something I wanted to talk to you about. To clear the air, so to speak, before we leave. Shit. <sighs> okay, go ahead. I'm not upset at you for how you feel about me, or even telling me how you feel. The way you did it certainly could have been handled differently. Fuck, this is so embarrassing. Rita buried her face in her hands. I was so fucked up that night. I don't know what came over me. I pulled her hands away so she could see me. And that's why we would never work out, Rita. I glanced at the door, grateful for the privacy. Something V and I are trying to do is to be as open and honest as we can be with each other. It's pretty liberating, actually, once you get used to it. I'm gonna do that with you now. A glint of fear flashed behind Rita's eyes. Was she that afraid of the truth? Of course she was. After all, how afraid had I been to face things? A mirror, indeed. Truth is, I think a part of me always knew how you felt about me. And I'd be lying if I didn't say you hadn't turned my head more than once or twice over the years. You know you're gorgeous, Rita. <laughs> Don't make me blush, Rita chuckled, not realizing her cheeks were already a rosy shade of red. I'm no better looking than any other doll or joy toy passing through the joint. I think we both know that's bullshit. But... What I want to tell you, now that I'm as clear and sober as I'll ever be, is that I never felt that way about you, Rita. As fucked up as I was that night, Jesus, did I get screwed up. Still can't believe I puffed the inhaler again after all those years. That's one thing I didn't manage to screw up. I told you how I felt then, and I meant it. It seemed like with every word I spoke... I was breaking Rita's heart piece by piece until all that was left of it were jagged shards scattered across the pavement. But she needed to know the truth just as much as I needed to say it. I'm not saying this to make you feel bad, I added, noticing the way her eyes shimmered. Honestly, it's pretty flattering. If I wasn't with V, then things probably would have kept going that night. Rita wiped at her eyes. I was surprised to see the way her lips curled in disgust as she examined the wetness covering her metallic hands. Judy, it's not just how smoking hot you are. And believe me, I've spent more hours than I can count stealing glances at you when I didn't think you were looking. But I... I always thought we had something more in common than just being mocks. Like, we were the same person. Can you tell me I'm wrong? No, I admitted. I see it too. In fact, I was just thinking it's like staring into a mirror when I look at you. And that's pretty fucking scary. Too scary. And that's the rub. What do you mean? I took a deep breath in and let it out in a long sigh. As much time as I had spent practicing in my head what I would say, it was a much harder experience actually standing across from her, trying to ignore the desperation in her eyes. It would be good, at first, admittedly. That excitement, that passion. But sooner or later, it would wear off. Probably when one of us woke up next to the other and checked to see if there was enough left in the inhaler for another hit. Rita's eyes widened in horror. Judy! I held my hand up, quickly silencing her. We both know that's true, Rita. Toxic. I'm not saying that's what you are. Quite the opposite. But that's what we would be for each other, and I don't want that for myself. I don't think you do either. That word, toxic, had left a bitter taste on the tip of my tongue when I spoke it. Rita seemed to understand my meaning, but had gone back to fidgeting with herself. I started to reach out to her just as V had done, and was startled when she suddenly grabbed the back of her head as though it were about to split open. I, I don't know what I want anymore. Not this. 
I'm out of a job. The gang don't feel like it used to anymore, and there's there's no one around to just to just talk to anymore. I'm fucking lonely, and that's a bad thing to be in this fucking city. I could already see what was coming next. The gears turning inside of her head were the same ones that had kept churning away inside my own, and which I would probably spend most, if not all, of my time trying to slow down. Can you help me, Judy? Damn it. I want to do what you're doing, getting out of this dump so I can get a fresh start. I just don't know where to fucking start. Judy. Shit. Will you help me? Rita, please. How easy it would be to say yes to those pleading eyes of hers. We really were the same person, and therefore, I could hold myself up as a blueprint for success. First, I'd move into her place for a few days so I could get her cleaned up. V would be a little suspicious, but it wouldn't be hard to allay her fears. Then we could see about trying to find her a new job, some place where she wouldn't have horny patrons staring at her tits every night. Cutting her off from that cunt Janice would quickly follow, and I even knew some resources she could look into for treatment, though she might need to save up for a little before... There they were. Those fucking gears of mine. A blueprint for success? Hardly. Maybe I'd finally laid a decent enough foundation that I could build upon, but there was still a massive amount of work to be done. No. All I could do to help her was to keep telling her the truth. Rita, I can't help you unless you're really wanting to help yourself first, and that's what's missing. You think I got my shit together? Look at me. I'm a complete fucking basket case, and the only reason I'm still standing on my own two feet right now is because of that woman inside of there. I pointed emphatically toward the door. Even though it was shut, I was quite certain V was standing right on the other side. Don't say that, Judy, Rita implored. Look at you. You're moving forward with your life. I don't want to be left behind, Rita. I'm moving forward because I have to. I haven't told you everything that's happened to us over the last few weeks, and I ain't about to either. Let's just say there's a reason I called the badges and not the mocks when the shit hit the fan. There's reasons why we're leaving this shithole behind, and we spent a lot of time looking ourselves in the mirror to make damn sure they were the right ones. That we weren't running away from ourselves, which is what you're doing right now. I had to pause to catch my breath. It was a terrible conclusion that I couldn't do anything more for Rita, but it was one I'd arrived at weeks ago, and this conversation only reinforced that view. The desperation had fled her eyes and had been replaced with despair. It was heartbreaking, but I pressed on. Look, I continued, ignoring the dull thump from behind the door which nearly made me snicker. I'm leaving NC for good, and I'm never coming back. I'm not going to be around to help you, Rita. But if you really get to the point where you want to change your life, then you give me a call, and as a friend... I'll do what I can to help you. Believe me, just having someone to open up to can make all the difference. I still want you in my life as a chum, even if we've brought out some of the worst in each other. A tear fell down Rita's cheek. I'm so sorry, Judy. This time, Rita didn't back away and allowed me to wrap my arms around her. The coldness of her embrace sent goosebumps across my skin. I know and I forgive you for anything you did, or think you did. You can let go of all that shit and focus on yourself for a while. That's one thing I've learned. You gotta take care of yourself first if you're gonna be any good for someone else. The sound of the door sliding open drew our attention away. V peeked her head around the corner, a mischievous smile on her face. We all good out here? I don't need to break you two up. Jesus, V but I was grateful for the sorely needed bit of levity. It was also a good chance to wrap things up with Rita. We still had two more stops to make, and neither of them were going to be easy. No, we're okay, Rita said, not bothering to hide her tears. 
Thanks again, V. I'll miss seeing you two around. Same goes for you, V replied, finally giving Rita the small squeeze on the shoulder she had tried to earlier. I'm gonna hop in the van and let you two finish up. I nodded and waited for V to walk past. Once she'd closed the door and I saw her picking through the nachos, I looked back at Rita. Remember what I said. Call me if and when you're ready. Not before, I will, Rita said solemnly. Come here. I didn't know what one more hug would do for Rita, but something, maybe the way she shuddered as she let out a shaky breath, or the gentle way she held on to me, told me it meant all the world to her. Take care of yourself, doll. You too, I whispered. And don't call me doll, doll. I pulled away and gave her one last smile. See ya, Rita. Bye, Jude. V didn't say anything as I climbed back into the van and snatched the container away from her. We both knew she'd heard it all. You ready for your stop? I asked. V looked out the window, her gaze hardening. As ready as I'll ever be. Once again, I chose not to steal one final glance at Rita Wheeler. We would have made a great cotton candy couple, but we were too similar in flavor. Night City would have devoured us.